Good day everyone, I am Janet Padirai from APM 12-11 and we are the last group and we discuss about the context of art. Context of art. This would include when the work was made, where it, where it was made both culturally and geographically, what is it made, and possibly some other detailed or information. Context consists of all the things about the artwork that might have influenced the artwork or the maker. The difference of context of art are contemporary, personal, cultural, and formal. It is important because curating an art collection within its context allows for a unified experience for the viewer. Simply, context means circumstances forming a background of an event, idea, or statement. As a student, engaged in art making and responding, they employ different contexts to understand and appreciate how artists incorporate a range of influences and layer of meaning. Next, the bulul. Bulul are the most numerous and best known of Ifuga figurative sculpture and usually take the form of either a standing or seated figure. They are carved from a single piece of wood and generally exhibit a stylish and geometric rendering of the human body. Bulul are used in ceremonies associated with rice production and with healing. The creation of bulul involves alwen bulul ritual by a priest to ensure that the statue gains power. The bulul is, tra is treated with care and respect to avoid the risk of the spirits of the ancestors bringing sickness. Another example is the creation of Adam. It is a detailed incredible work that can be interpreted in many different ways. The image has a spiritual message that assets, assets God as creator of humanity. But the image could have an anatomical meaning as well. One such is the creation of Adam that illustrates the biblical creation narrative from the book of Genesis in which God gives life to Adam. On the other hand, Gaston de Mag's context is the exhibition system. Either in the Paris-based artist, the gallery, or a museum context under the domain of contemporary arts in the fine arts, his artworks employ the balloon and other mundane objects from his native Ifugao homeland as a subject matter. He would often utilize industrial materials and process within the national Bulul imagery to form installation in the museum and galleries in various parts of the world. In these examples, the Bulul crosses over from everyday to the exhibition system, either as a collection in the gallery or museum context or as a material or subject matter for a contemporary artist. Important facts about Bulul. A remarkable Bulul collection can be viewed in storage at Hiwang Village, Banao, Ifugao. Tourists and locals can see examples of Bulul at the H. Osley Bayer Museum located within the vicinity. The Bankab Museum in Baguio City also has a big collections of Bulul. Thus, we can see that the Bulul, though the ancient in the origin, continues to be contemporary. It continues to be valued and made by the people of the present. However, it is the contemporariness is situated in the domain of everyday life. What happens to an object when it is removed from its original context and changes its functions? There is a physical change. For instance, how do meanings change when a bulul is presented in a museum? Imagine the bulul atop a pedestal protected by a glass case labeled and enhanced by a spotlight. When a traditional form is combined with machine fabricated materials and exhibited in a contemporary arts gallery, how does our perceptions of the bulul change? Betis Pampanga sculpture is learned through a partnership with the Matikanan Mandukit or Master Sculpture. Sculptor. Red paper, red paper mache, sculpture of horse or taka, paete laguna is for ex, export or local sale. In the gallery and museum setting, the uniqueness and 
individual expression is given much importance. Some artists deliberately for, foreground their cultural identity in their works. The Taosog National Artist Abdul Marie Asia Imao awarded Dear 2006 Integrate Culture of Mindanao like the mythical Sari Manok. So this is the picture of Sari Manok and also the Sari Manok also known as Papanok in its feminine form. Also, Sari Manok is a legendary bird of the Maranao people who or originate from Mindanao an island in the Philippines, and part of Philippine mythology. It comes from the words sari and manok. And next, the tala andi, tawag sa mga arte sa bukidnon. So this is one of the tala andi. On the other hand, express their affinities with the land by using soil, soil, soil instead of pigments and painting about their present concerns. So next, this is Julie Latch from Iligan City. Emphasize her female identity and personal experience, experiences in many of her terracotta works. In cutting onions always makes me cry. In the year of 1988, her self-portrait presents cooking a role associated with woman in the home as oppressive. And unpleasant, this is the picture of her work called Cutting Onions Always Makes Her Cry. Tinalak is a weaving tradition of the Tiboli people at South Cotabato, Philippines. Tinalak cloth is woven by um, exclusive women who have received the desire for the wave in their dreams, which they believe are key from Fudalu, the Tiboli goddess of Abaca. Tinala is a traditional hand-woven cloth and they just to the Tiboli people from the Cotabato region. It is woven in order to celebrate and pay tribute to major life events such as birth, life, marriage, or death within the community. Tinalak uses fibers, producing storms inspired by nature, clank crot, gamyao, bird and fly, toti frog, and a sawo snake skin. Rubin Tompkins has experimented with iron-rich San Dionisio clay sourced from her native Iloilo. Delfa Rubin, born 1941, is a ceramic artist from the Philippines living in the United States. She is also known as, uh, as Nelfa Kerubin Tompkins, the daughter of a fisherman. She was born in Concepcion, Iloilo, and began working in clay in 1973. She came to the United States in 1985 and now lives in Golden, Colorado with her husband, Michael Tompkins. In 1980, she received the Cultural Center of the Philippines 13 Artist Award for her, for her contributions to Philippine contemporary art. In 2015, she published A Passion for Clay, co-authored with Patrick Flores and Imelda Kahipe and Daya. Kerubin has participated in a number of national and international exhibitions and has been the subject of three retrospectives. Her work is held in the collections of the University of the Philippines Visayas, the Kirkland Museum of Fine and Decorative Art in Denver, the Cultural Center of the Philippines, the Design Center of the Philippines, and the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, as well as various public and private collections. A Passion for Clay brings together Kerbin's most sought-after ceramic pieces, spanning from the late 1980s to 2013. Centering on medium and technique, her practice and explicitly freehand and is much more organic than it may appear. The vitality of her works, which stylistically integrate impressions of astronomy, geology, and panoramic scenery, guarantees Kerubin an exceptional place in the pantheon of Philippine contemporary ceramics. 
laden with the complexities of the natural world. Her work bellies rich imagery of top topography and of organic matter. Even more intriguing are the distinct contrasts in her work. Saturated and subsisting, sharp and pure, art and design, utility and frivolity, attractiveness and otherness. Ivatan Houses in Batanes The traditional Ivatan Houses in Batanes are built using stones and fango for its walls, a kind of mortar formed by combining kogon and mud beads. The oldest surviving Ivatan house is the House of Dakai, which was built in 1887. It is now maintained by Lola Ida, one of the oldest women living on the island. The Ivatan houses are not the typical houses you can find in the Philippines. The Ivatan people, an ethnolinguistic group of the Batanes province in the northernmost part of the country, built the now famous stone houses for a very good reason. To protect them against the harsh environmental conditions. The Ivatan House is a unique vernacular architecture developed in the province of Batanes. Its compact structure is divided into four areas. The main house, the cooking house, toilet, and bathhouse. During the cold seasons, the cooking house also serves as sleeping quarters. The houses of Ibatan are constructed and repaired through a cooperative system called Kaibay Banaan or Kaman Hiduan. Through this system, houses are fixed with immediate action. Good day, my name is Chelsea C. Bernuevo and I'm going to talk about the artwork of Jun Yi, Vijay Villafranca, and Fernando Amersolo. Jun Yi made an ephemeral installation at the grounds of the CCP titled Angud, A Forest Once, Year 2000. And Vijay Villafranca is one of the photographers who warned the public about the alarming effects of climate change and how it forces people to become refugees in their own land. And lastly, Fernando Amorsolo painted landscape as a romantic picture. The painting is called Toilers of the Sea by Ricarte Puruganan, painted in 1940. So Ricarte Puruganan was born in 1912, was regarded as Filipino, Asian, modern, and contemporary painter. He is also a member of the group called 13 Moderns, a group of Filipino artists who broke away from scholarly and conservative art styles in the 1930s. He is also a graduate of UP or the University of the Philippines. The painting Toilers of the Sea by Ricarte Puruganan is currently located in Vargas Museum. And itong painting ito, it depicts um, simple yung pamumuhay sa pang-araw-araw. And dito, may apat na character na may kita. Puro sila mangingisda sa gitna ng dagat. Ang tatlo sa kanila ay nagsasagwan at yung isa naman ay nagahagis ng net. And sa diring kalayuan na background, may kita rin yung isang island na medyo blurry na siya. So that means na nanggaling sila doon, mas malayo na sila sa shore. So that means na papalayo na sila sa lugar ng pinanggalingan nila. At isa pang principle na may kita sa painting ay ang curvaceous line of waves. Nag-indicate ito ng kalali, medyo kalaliman na dagat pero hindi naman ganong kadelikado para sa mga mangingisda. At ang art style naman ito ay Philippine traditional art has always been a great part of the life. Of the sea, a significant a slice in the community for a long time. It means ang isang tao na nagtatrabaho ng mahabang panahon or oras. oras. So, so, itong artwork na to, it represents the hard work ng araw-araw natin. Ariane is to provide for their families and to provide traditional art iba na nagwiwib sila. Hanggang ngayon nagdadamay pa rin. Since ang character naman makita dito sa painting ay yung mga kasinoo pa ng mga katutubo. That means it is representing pa yung paghihirap na ginagawa ng mga mangingisda natin para lang provide sila o tawag doon ginagamay pa rin siya hanggang ngayon sa mga palabok at pansit kapag may mga handaan or um order. Yung banig din, ngayon, uso na rin siya ngayon kapag nag-online selling ka, pwede mong gawing background. So, mahalaga pa rin talaga. Marami pang ibang 
traditional art na hanggang ngayon ay ginagamit pa rin natin. Nandun na rin yung mga basket na nagagamit pa rin natin sa pang araw-araw. Talagang mahalaga pa rin siya. Pabalat is a local tradition of paper cutting originating in the province of Bulacan in the Philippines. It involves making of cutting small intricate designs on delicate papel de hapon or Japanese paper as pastillas wrappers. The origin of the tradition is quite vague, but one would immediately notice its resemblance to the vibrant little flags or banderitas of Mexico. The art form may have been derived from Chinese paper cutting brought by Chinese merchants. The designs of Pabalat may vary depending on the occasions a Bulacanio family is celebrating. Local town fiestas, birthdays, weddings, and other special occasions usually have these beautifully wrapped handmade pastillas at the center of their celebrations. Luz Ocampo died in 2016 at age of 93. She is considered the pioneer of the ameticulous art as she devoted most of her life making borlas de pastillas. Her daughter, Nanay Nati Ocampo, one of the remaining keepers of the Pabalat art, continues to practice the tedious and time-consuming food art. The art is not only a cultural product or an artistic expression but also cuts through some cultural, social, and even political discourses and issues. Pabalat is also a folk art or in Filipino term, sining bayan. It is a folk art because it originated among the townsfolk reflect, ref, reflecting their traditional culture. The art practice has also been passed from generation to generation and its creative elements and aesthetic values mirror the people's everyday life. Another important aspect of this folk tradition is that the makers of these intricate paper patterns do not see themselves as artists and do not consider their works as an art. Taking a quote from Dr. Brenda Fajardo in her book, Ang Inukit na Kaalamang Bayan ng Paete. Ang sining bayan ay may nilikhang bagay na karaniwan at nakararaming tao sa lipunan. Ito ay gawa ng katutubo ng karaniwang binubuo ng mga sinaunang malikhaing gawa na nakagisnan at naipasa sa salinha, lahi o di kay makabagong paggawa na nilikha ng masa at sumagsagot sa pangangailangan sa araw-araw. This definition is very true to the aesthetic function and mode of production of the pabala. Lirio Salvador fuses easily accessible objects like machine discards, bicycle parts, and implements to form an assemblage. Lirio Salvador was born in 1968. He graduated with a degree in fine arts at the Technological University of the Philippines. From 2006, his works has been shown in different international art fairs. Lirio Salvador is an alchemist of object and sound. Also a member of the band Elemento, the artist is dedicated to producing and reproducing experimental sound compositions. Elemento makes use of his sculptural assemblages and homemade synthesizers. Salvador's works are products of an alchemist. Gold lies in his ingenious fuse of decorative art and functional art, as well as the transformation of ordinary objects into a whole new artifact. Gears, mixing valves, utensils, and door handles make up these string instruments. Art, as proven by this artist, is no longer constrained to a passive gaze and a mereness for our bottoms. It has now been made into an occasion to produce or reproduce art at infinitum from a single art object. Rio Salvador is an alchemist of object and sound and also a member of the band Elemento. The artist is dedicated to producing, reproducing experimental sound compositions. And it's all about the merging of my native oriental culture with a present industrial environment that is slowly corrupting my native land. Filipino artist Lirio Salvador talking about ethno-industrial art, his own creation that integrates performance art, sculpture, and sound art all into one. The vision is at the heart of Salvador's ethno-industrial art, a lifelong artistic process of transforming auditory and visual materials as a likely to response to being a Filipino in the 21st century. 
As a sculpture, Salvador created polished and complex metal sculptures constructed from everyday materials such as bowls, bicycles, gears, pipes, and spoons, to name a few. Salvador has been rightly and fondly called an alchemist of object and sound. This is because these sculptures are functioning musical instruments, it's producing strange noises and unconventional amplifying sound. These metallic forms are inspired not only by their materials, but figurative associations from Salvador's imagination, as well as his knowledge of sound engineering. More than musical instruments, they are mechano-organic sculptures with many parts and able to accommodate more attachments and transformation as a Salvador sees fit. Also called sandata or weapons of sound construction, they have been displayed on walls or as a freestanding sculptures in museums and galleries throughout and outside the Philippines. However, they find their true place as they come alive in hands of Salvador the musicians. Welding Sandatas, Elemento, led by Salvador, was an experimental music collective that performed throughout the 1990s in numerous venues and art spaces, including the Art Science Museum in Singapore in 2011. His performances and installations with his Sandatas were pushing the boundaries of experimental music and sound art in the Philippines and the regions. And here on the next slide is by Emilio. Captured interesting patterns and forms often overlooked in the city. When you look at the first photo, there is a meaning to that. And that is, your image don't only show how plastics and waste is polluting the earth, but also show a sense of beauty in it all. Although art is a form of expression, we discern that throughout its history, the works are not always created out of the artist's own volition. Changes in society, politics, and economy affects the artists, the work that they do, and the structures that support their production. Good day everyone! I'm Christy Manguel and I'm going to discuss about this, technology. Technological innovations engender shifts in artistic production. So technology has impacted the arts greatly. It has opened up so many opportunities for artists and has expanded the number of techniques artists are able to access. Artists can now paint on an iPad just as well as they can on canvas with paintbrush and paint. That was called cave art. Digital art is an artistic work or practice that uses digital technology as part of the creative or presentation process. In an expanded sense, digital art is contemporary art that uses the methods of mass production or digital media. The internet helped numerous artists make their artwork more visible, increasing accessibility to worldwide audiences. So advanced technology also enable the artist to transform and manipulate their artwork, thus becoming a significant art medium. As you can see in your screen, uh, it is considered one of the most important cameras of photography history because it contributes to the accessibility of photography to the general public because of its design functioning and price and most importantly to non-professional users the Kodak was a camera box built in the shape of parallel pipe so photography art you guys are familiar with this right so it is also known as fine art photography is photographic artworks that are created in line with artist vision the artwork uses photography as the artist's chosen medium for creative expression. Oh, I forgot to mention that contemporary in the art world refers to artworks uh, created in the present time or very recent past. So next, uh, we have here a Dalagang Bukid or in English, it's Country Maiden. So the making of the film was an adaptation of Hermogenes Ilagan Sarsuela entitled Dalagang Bukid.
It was a theatrical success and performing arts genre at the PAX office at that time. So Nepo Masenyo also decided to use the original performers of the Sarsuela, which include Atang Dilarama, who was a national artist for theater and music in 1987. So did you know that in Nepo Masenyo's time, technology integrating music was not yet available. So the latter would be produced through a cappella with the movie run. I'm Summer Jean Saracanlao, Benedicto Reyes Cabrera, better known as Ben Cab. Ben Cab was born to Democrito Cabrera and Isabel Reyes in Malabon, Philippines on April 10, 1942. He was the youngest of nine children. Ben Cab's first exposure in discovery of the arts happened told his elder brother Salvador, who was already an established artist during Ben Cab's childhood. He went on the study at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, where he explored different arts visual forms, photography, draftsmanship, printmaking, while honing his chosen craft as a painter. He received his bachelor degree in fine arts in 1963. Ben Cab is a Filipino painter and was awarded National Artist of the Philippines for Visual Arts in 2006. In this picture, Brown Brothers' burden has all the hallmarks of dramatic, emotion, and intellectual with that, has established Ben Cab in both Philippines' international art circle. A white man is seated in a sedan chair, held aloft by four brown men. The seated man has a pale, pink, featureless, Face beneath and a straw boater in a parasol with shield, him with the sun. His flabby body is encased in a white suit, the uniform of colonial master from Asia to America. Two barefoot men bear the bamboo poles attached to the chair. The man at the right appears to be a proud Highland warrior, tall, dark, and full bodied, with long black hair, wearing only a long cloth, whose ends and hang between his legs, juxtaposing the image of a strong, free and proud warrior with a defined cultural identity, symbolized by the lone cloth, with that of a servant badly adapting to Western culture, the man in Humboldt, brown man's burden in arresting portrait of Asians, then and now, transformed by the coming of the white man. Good day everyone, my name is Maria Oela and today let's discuss the mode of reception. Mode of reception presents the idea of an artwork that may acquire new meanings even after the creator ceases to manipulate its form. It refers to the manner of which a text was received visually, orally, and combination of this. So basically it says here that the personal or I mean the artist or the audience personal context like age, gender, beliefs, cultural background may strongly influence the form and content of an artwork. The question here is how our personal context or everyday life affect the reception of, a, of an artwork or, or how we receive or how we see an art well as with most things people see things about them and within their ambit of their lives through a, the, through a, through a personal lens develop on the basis of their own worldview in relation to the art if the audience have no knowledge and experience anything could contribute to how they receive or see a particular artwork. If it is a figurative work, in other words, something able to be recognized, it may be less offensive regardless of how technically good or bad it might be than a non-figurative work. And those with knowledge or experience in the fine arts will see in a totally different light. Now, let me give you an example. I know most of us are familiar or I mean most of you are familiar with Clack 9. Clack 9 is a Filipino solo artist. His music began his music career began by joining a gangster group called Death Threat. 
and his songs promotes social i mean awareness on social injustice poverty and patriotism and most of the songs are really relatable especially to our fellow filipino and based on the people that already ha that already listen to his songs are really amazed on how he tells the the reality in our society through a song in the presentation you can see an image there and that image is an artwork of medeo cruz called politismo and below that image there's a question prominent or notorious if i were to ask what's my answer on that i would say notorious that artwork for me is notorious why because as a roman catholic i believe that that artwork shows disrespect to god but I know, but those persons who are going to answer prominent, well, I respect because we know naman na we have different beliefs regarding on that. In a different light. Lastly, the mode of reception is an important context which considers the moment by which we encountered the artwork and how we might respond or engage with it in relation to the personal knowledge, beliefs, and experiences.